American Environmental Review is a national platform where nature and technology meet, where protecting and preserving our precious resources take center stage, where the spotlight seeks out and shines on the environmental innovators. This editorial series, featured on public television, takes an inside look at the outdoors, explores how the decisions we make today impact each of our tomorrows. Arctech was handpicked as a featured guest because of its commitment to the environment in which we live. Since the beginning of time, human beings have made decisions in respect to the environment, whether to live with it in conflict or coexistence. We live with the consequences of those decisions today, just as we will live with today's decisions tomorrow. I'm Morley Safer, and this is American Environmental Review. From the Stone Age to today's age of technology, minerals have helped propel the growth of society. Throughout this century, Coal is one mineral that has continued to supply many industries. Coal is part of everybody's daily life. Coal supplies about 56% of all of the electricity used in the United States. And we all know how important electricity is to everything that we do, from computers to cooking. So coal, in essence, is part of everybody's life, whether they know it or not. It's made our standard of living what it is today. And with more than one billion tons of coal being produced each year, the industry is trying to reduce the amount of emissions associated with the process. The industry has been very, very active in, in developing technologies to reduce those emissions. We burn more coal in utilities today, 950 million tons than ever before. But our emissions of SO2 and NOx and particulates and, and other emissions are lower uh, per ton of coal and lower than they've been in years. So new technologies have made that possible. With an estimated 200 year supply of coal still in the ground, industry professionals have been searching for better ways to use the mineral. Research has led one group of scientists at Arctech in Virginia to develop a new biotechnology from coal known as humic acid for a variety of applications. What we are trying to do here is to take coal and utilize completely. For example, in our process, we will we take coal and do a, a biological treatment uh, to produce uh, methane gas, and the residue from that process, which is now humic rich material, is subjected to another uh, process of, uh, where we convert this residue into humic acid, which is a water soluble material. The humic acid can be used in a wide variety of applications, from environmental cleanup to recycling explosives into fertilizer. This holistic approach is expected to provide an effective solution for the control of greenhouse gas emissions by shifting the use of coal. There, there are several applications. One of them, for example, is in, uh, in agriculture, obviously, that uh, you can use uh, humic substances to increase your productivity in agriculture. You can, uh, you can spray them as liquid uh, humic materials, or you can uh, put them on as, solids, uh, as solid materials and uh, they can be used as coatings for seeds, they can be used for uh, all kinds of other, many other ways to make the soil more fertile. And making the soil more fertile is only one way new clean technologies are helping to build the foundation for future generations. Here we are uh, going to show you uh, how we are implementing this technology. Uh, our first approach is as an uh, in-situ application uh, where we introduce microbes and appropriate in nutrients in the coal seam and pump out the methane, natural gas. Uh, depending upon the coal, uh, we have obtained gas production as much as 300 to 500 cubic feet per ton of coal. Uh, according to the U.S. Geological Survey, there is there are almost 5.6 trillion tons of coal uh, in the coal fields of the United States. These coal seams occur at depths of 1,000 feet or below and are both uneconomical and unsafe to mine. 
so our in situ approach will create an environmentally safe and highly economical gas production for many centuries uh, to come from this type of uh, resources. Our second approach is ex situ, where the mined coal is ground to fine uh, powder like we do today for coal combustion. But in this case, the finely ground coal is mixed with the water and inoculated with the, our adapted MIC-1 microbes and nutrients. Uh, and we introduce these into a, a digester which are well proven for anaerobic uh, uh, treatment of the waste waters and industrial uh, waste uh, today. This approach is more efficient uh, because the fine particle size of the coal and the optimum conditions uh, we can create in the anaerobic digester. Uh, this results into a gas up to about 10,000 cubic feet of gas per ton of coal. Another advantage of this approach is that, uh, that any residue left, we convert the, this into humic acid products and thus creating a, a total higher value and as well as a complete utilization of coal without any wastes. Uh, here Dr. Shaban will show the operations of the MIC gas uh, biogasifier. In this biogasifier, we are monitoring the temperature, pH, and flow rate, and as well as we can uh, take a gas sample and determine its composition on the gas chromatograph. We also withdraw liquid sample and monitor it for intermediate chemicals as well as look at microscopes under the microscope. Well, Artec is a very interesting company. I've been uh, looking at their uh, production system this morning and they're uh, doing a lot of uh, important things in trying to develop application of humic substances in, uh, in terms of uh, filters, absorbents, in, in terms of, uh, you know, detoxifying, uh, you know, the military sites and, uh, you know, it, uh, and uh, they're doing uh, many, many applications that are very useful for ag agriculture, potentially also for industry and for, for other areas. What we are trying to do here is to create a a solution which will then allow us to you know, utilize coal in a more environmentally sound manner and at the same time to create a higher value profits uh, from coal uh, and uh, you know create a solutions for some of the you know uh, problems we have in terms of uh, dealing with increasing our agriculture productivity cleaning up our contaminated waters dealing with the legacy of the environment uh, or legacy of the uh, the cold war uh, you know the the stockpiles of uh, bombs and explosives we have, uh, you know, sitting all over the world. And so this technology approach gives a way to, you know, create these problems into rather opportunities. I see a tremendous future for it because there have been only a few of us uh, that have studied these materials extensively in the past and the numbers are going up, but uh, the possibilities are immense because these materials are very widely available. They're all around us and we can make them from coal and uh, we can do it, at, do it at very relatively low cost and uh, therefore these uh, materials are very attractive to people who are looking for new ideas, new applications and I'm sure it's going to come and it's going to happen. It may take a few more years but it's going to come. John F. Kennedy once said, the supreme reality of our time is the vulnerability of our planet. It is a timeless statement. World population, consumption and technology push forward often more quickly than natural resources can support, or, with consequences, more costly than we can afford. The need for a unified effort to nurture, renew, and protect the planet has never been more compelling. Therefore, once again, American Environmental Review extends a special thanks to the companies that have risen to meet today's environmental challenges. This has been a presentation of WJMK.